Return Bike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE. That's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to this week's edition of the Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we're going to be talking about the state and national sports betting reports, about launches, as well as uh, openings for different sports books. Um, We've got legislation. We've got uh, deals to talk about, as usual. And as always, it's been a busy week. Um, we even have uh, the upcoming launch in Canada to yeah, talk about. Yeah, what a is it? Bit. April fourth. Is, April that the, 4th. Uh, is that the ma- magic date? Exactly. But before we get to Canada, we're going to talk a little bit about the United States, and uh, we're going to start with the American Gaming Association is reporting that right now there are twelve of the remaining seventeen states that have not have operational sports betting uh, industries going. 12 now have uh, live legislation in their uh, okay. states that are moving forward to actually launch sports betting. So according to the American Gaming Association, what, what's the official numbers? We have how, how many states that don't have sports betting? Five. Oh, no. How many states that don't have well, sports betting? You're talking, about, you're talking about actually... That just don't have sports betting. 17. 17 states. 12 have active legislation. Okay. Uh, there are five remaining that have no live legislation <laughs> moving forward. They just have no plans whatsoever. No, they they don't what, really. What care. are the five? Do they list the five? Yeah, one, two are expected. Utah, Texas. Okay, that's kind of expected. Vermont, okay. even though Vermont did, I think it was not last year, but the year before, did commission a study on sports betting. Let me tell you something. Vermont is surrounded by sports betting state. Well, except for Maine. I, well, I think. we're going to be talking about okay. Maine. Okay, Ma- Maine is getting a little closer. But you just Vermont- did a little foreshadowing there. Okay. We're going to talk about Maine in a little bit. All right. Uh, the other two states, Idaho and Hawaii. Okay. So those five states have no active legislation going through. And have through. no plans in the foreseeable well, future. Hawaii, Hawaii so. last year, towards the end of the last legislative session, had six bills. Yeah. And none of them went through. I always thought Hawaii would be the greatest place for casino resorts. I mean, it's a vacation area anyway, and I, I think Hawaii would thrive with casino and resorts and things like that. So. Well, they've, they've got a ton Who knew? Of, I don't know. Got, they've got a ton of golf courses and other types of resorts there. I think they're happy with that. <laughs> I, I, Hawaii I doesn't know. even have lottery, right? No, that that was one of the bills that didn't make it They have absolutely nothing. No. Absolutely. They can't even decide on lottery, so no. I don't think no. casinos are in the near future. Well, Utah's the same way. It has nothing like that. Okay. So, uh, but there are five states that have yet to um, actually launch or even consider filing uh, sports betting legislation, uh, which leads us into some more discussion of what was going on in February. February seems to be what, for now, is a typical month in the United States sports betting industry. February had the what became the sixth, let me get the number, sixth consecutive month the national handle has topped $5 billion. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is actually even considered the month where everything is slowed down because That's it's we, between I, Super Bowl and March Madness yeah. and February is there are still states that are actually setting uh, some uh, interesting numbers for in terms of handles. Yeah, I know. It's, February seems to be a lull in the sports betting industry. I don't know why. I mean, the uh, second week, what was it? February 13th was the Super Bowl. So, well, again, um, a lot of people had their uh, sports bets in for I January. I guess so. And, 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 uh, a lot better games in January with the NFL playoffs. So I guess I have that, to admit, that yeah, drove I, a lot of betting. But, no, I, I'm very surprised at February. The Super Bowl month is kind of a lull for everything. I I know what Pennsylvania and Michigan were in the red. They As actually, a matter of fact, <laughs> they yes. actually uh, lost money. <laughs> Michigan had a negative four point eight million dollars in revenue. Yeah, and Pennsylvania came in with a negative four hundred forty thousand and some change, which I think is their worst month. I revenue believe it wise, was. yes, yeah? yes, okay. that was their their worst month. Wow. But again, you know, February had uh, is is a lull, but January. Remember, they had Louisiana and Arizona still. Arizona still has yet to report their January numbers. (laughs) So I'm very curious to see what Arizona comes up with. Okay. They've been actually doing two months at a time. Okay. So, you know, it's it's actually kind of 
interesting that even though the handle has been going up in terms of February, we're seeing a lot of revenue being down. Mm. And uh, it's and we're still setting the consistent $5 billion yeah, handle yeah. mark. Uh, in terms of overall, listen to this number, and I got to thank uh, Chris Altruda again from U.S. Bets for throwing this number out there. The $42 billion bet since September 2001 is more than the amount bet between 2018 and 2020. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Forty two billion since September two thousand twenty one. The two thousand eighteen to two thousand twenty was combined thirty nine billion, thirty nine point three billion. Okay. I mean it's about two two billion dollar difference, three billion dollar difference. Well, look, but that is still a significant leap in terms of the number of There are so many m- more states yes. allowing sports betting. So I guess that's what's driving the number there. So. Yes. Well, um as we're taping this, we're awaiting uh this this current week's New York numbers, but I think it's safe. Which will to be say, phenomenal yes. again. I, th- so. I think it's safe to say <laughs> that by the end of this eleventh week of operation, New York should have over four billion dollars in handle. Yeah, yeah. for that. Uh, at the the week ending March thirteenth, they were at three point nine billion. Okay, so they were only sh- you know short money away from uh, passing the four billion dollar mark anyway. So mm-hmm. I think we're safe in saying that. The uh, the market has surpassed the four billion dollar mark in eleven weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, DraftKings uh, also uh, was only fifty million dollars away from the billion dollar club. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm I'm going to make the assumption. Yeah, that DraftKings became the uh, fourth operator to uh, the third operator to pass to surpass uh, the uh, billion dollar mark. We have Fanduel, Caesars, and possibly DraftKings. I'm hedging that right now, but right. it's it should be those three as billion-dollar handles since launch in New York. New York is an interesting state. A, uh, y- y- I'm sure you're aware the uh, decision came down making fantasy sports legal, and everyone's like uh, thinking, you know, they're still litigating fantasy sports in New York. I mean, <laughs> the same operators are taking sports bets, and they're still litigating fantasy sports. So, uh, but... Uh, a big case came down, and uh, New York's highest court said, "Yeah, fantasy sports uh, game of skill, and it's legal now." So, well, you just gotta, want to throw that in. I, I found it incredible that they're still talking about fantasy sports being legal or illegal in New York. It it does affect two of the operators in New York, sure. DraftKings and FanDuel. Sure, and I think overall bottom line, the ruling is going to help them. Yes, they're going to oh, have yeah. more oh, and more oh, business oh, coming okay. in. Uh, of course, it's going to help I, them. I think also it's going to ripple down through the other states that are having the same kind of question. Yeah, well, I I think it's just incredible that they're still talking about the legality of fantasy sports and the same operators are legal sports betting uh, book operators in, in New York. So I, I think it's, you know, I, I got to be honest with you, when I saw the ruling, I I just remember, oh, yeah, this case is still going on. I forgot all about it. So, okay. I, I honestly think we may see it continue to go on for a while. I mean, you're well, going to see not something. Not New York. Not but, New York, but uh, I'm so. talking about that yeah. that argument back and forth. So. Uh, before we get away with the uh, – we started off the this segment here with the American Gaming Association. I'm going to uh, at least announce this one, the USFL. Yes. Constantly in the news now. Uh, they have joined the American Gaming Association's Have a Game Plan Great. Responsibly program. Good. You're going to be seeing promos, announcements, that sort of social media by the league in terms of the bet responsible, responsible gaming. I, I, I really can't wait for the USFL. I, I'm very curious. It's kind of like a uh, kind of trip down memory lane for me. I, I, I love them in the 80s and... So uh, I, I'd be very curious to see. I, I'd, I'm also curious to see the level of football being played. I, I'm, I'm curious how good the football product is going to be. So uh, You know, as long as it's better than what we've seen in the other spring leagues so mm-hmm. far, I mean, the the awful AAFL, if you want to call <laughs> it that, uh, it was good football, decent mm-hmm. football, uh, not really that great. Yeah. 
And um, well, I'm sure the USFL is going to get a lot of people tuning in because of the reason I just said. You know, they kind of grew up with it. Oh yeah, kind of the, I guess three or four years in the '80s, and you know, it was uh, this fun is, to watch. This is 80s. almost like the nostalgia. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't wait. I mean, I, I, I guess when the XFL relaunches, it's going to have some impact with uh, people who saw yeah. the original one. I still have, uh, like I said, I still have t-shirts for the Jersey Generals and I have a sweatshirt for the Jersey Generals. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, and I got to break those out. I'm just glad they included them in, you know, the Yeah, all the, uh, ori- most of the original teams. I'm Not all to of think them. Of. Not all of them. I don't know. The LA Express, the, I don't the, think. There's only eight teams and none of yeah. them are on the West Coast. There's Michi- oh, okay. Michigan Panthers are back. Michigan Panthers, yeah. Yeah, Birmingham Stallions. Yeah. Uh, I don't Is know Houston about Memphis Gamblers? Show. Houston Houston Gamblers. Okay. All right. Jersey Generals, Philadelphia Stars. Stars. Um the Breakers. But when when the USFL started, the Breakers were Boston Breakers. Boston, the New England, and then they went to New Orleans. New Orleans Breakers. Yeah. The uh, name didn't really fit how, in, back the, down there, but they, I guess maybe. they still have the Washington Federals. I don't know if they're that part was, of the uh, new, Craig uh, James. Uh, he yes. was running back for uh, Washington uh, Federals. So, uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm they, very interested to see. It. It's going to be kind of fun to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, as we're moving from the United States, let's talk about Canada because we got their launch coming up. We might as well talk April about. April 4th, right? Talk about yeah. this launch. They've got about 30 operators. Okay. <laughs> all I mean, together. jumping on uh, uh, all April approved. 4th? All approved. Oh, okay. Well, the, these wow. are private operators. Okay. The, the lotteries in the provinces are already up and running, and they're doing extremely well mm-hmm. with the single event sports betting. Okay. This is the private operator launch. We've got about 30 operators, like I said. Okay. BetMGM just got approval. The score bet, points bet Canada. Uh, there's a few of them that are actually allowing you to pre-register, and they're getting some good responses. Mm-hmm. No exact numbers yet, but if you look at some of the stores... And I think a couple of people uh, tweeted this out, Ryan Butler and a few other people tweeted out the numbers mm-hmm. that uh, I think a couple of them are already number one and number two in downloads in the stores. Oh, okay. For Good. Canada. Good. And I want to thank those guys for uh, putting that information out there as well. Great. Um, but like I said, we have Canada launching. Uh, one of the big news stories that came out of there, uh, we actually got two. Okay. Uh, Camby. Camby is the platform provider for sports books. Yeah. They are the first sports book provider to be licensed by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. Good. They are the there. first that's provider. Good. So that's that's a brand new uh, category that was given permission to launch on April 4th. Um, the other deal that happened was uh, Points Bet Canada and the Canadian Football League team, the Ottawa Red Blacks. What an awful name. Red Blacks? What's that? I have what to go take mean? a look. I don't even uh, know what that means. It has, it, it, it's, Weren't the Ottawa Rough Riders? Wasn't well, I that? I think or? they changed the name because there was two Rough Riders. Yeah. I get, well, yeah, Calgary Rough Riders. Yes. There there are there were two Rough Riders. Now there's a Red Black. Red Black. But uh, Point Spec I don't Canada, know what a Red Black is. Is that a... This uniform. Oh, j- Red Black. Yes. Very creative. Yes. <laughs> not not their uniform, but the uniform of the, the Rough Rider. Oh, okay. The colors. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Points Bet Canada, Ottawa Red Blacks, and TD Place, which is the home of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Okay, Red have Blacks. have all done a deal. I can't get over that name, though. Oh, no. I, why, why, didn't they just do a like a contest so the fans can rename it and figure out the best name? They did I don't Red know Blacks? how the CFL did, did this. They stuff. looked down at their shirt and they said Red Blacks. I guess. Okay. Uh, but uh, they are going to, you're going to be seeing uh, Points Bet Canada logos all over the Red Black jerseys. Okay. Uh, you're going to see re- Points Bet Canada all over the TD Place Stadium where they play. You know, it goes well with Points Bet because aren't there colors red and black? Well, I, I it's, think per- that's, it's perfect. For I think a, that's uh, kind of why bet. that deal was kind of yeah, made. Yeah, really? You know, I, I mean, I don't want to say, speak for Points Bet, but if it's a perfect color match, they don't yeah. have to change their logos. They're not going to. Re- they're actually going to. We pick the team because of the color. Blend it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, their patches are going to look great if they're yeah. going to have patches on them. So, so uh, and also they're going to be. Uh, the presenting sponsor of one of the uh, lounges. Okay. In T in TD, I don't want to call it TD Park. Uh, TD Place. TD Place. That's All their right. stadium. All right. So uh, we got some uh, interesting deals coming up. I'm, I'm very curious to see this launch on April 4th because it's almost it almost sounds like it's going to be a shotgun launch. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. just going to hit the ground running, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll be fun to see exactly where the industry goes with the private operators. I think they're 
Ontario is probably going to be the center of everything for yeah, the entire yeah. country there. Yeah, no, no I, April 4th is going to be crazy. It's going to be a great day in Canada. But the so. Red Blacks are the very first CFL team to do a sports betting deal. Okay. So a little history made for that, history made for Camby. Uh, good luck, Canada. It's going to be fun. Yep. Uh, going back into the United States, uh, DraftKings had a whole bunch of announcements um, regarding sportsbook openings. Okay. I'll just go through some of these right here. DraftKings opened a temporary sports book at Hollywood Casino Baton Rouge. All right. Permanent book is expected to open in 2023. The reason they didn't do a permanent book right now is the casino is being moved on land. It's a riverboat. Oh, it's a riverboat. Okay. They're doing a land facility. Okay. That's good. And uh, this announcement comes two years after they announced that deal. Yeah, I've never been on a riverboat casino. I wonder. They don't uh, really go in the river anymore. They're just docked. They're just docked? They're docked. Okay. They're docked. Um, so, uh, they're actually moving it into a land-based facility. Uh, also DraftKings announced that they will unveil a new 6,000 square foot state of the art permanent retail book at the DraftKings at Casino Queen site. All right. Uh, that was one where they actually rebranded the casino. The casino just used to be called Casino Queen. Okay. Now it's DraftKings at Casino Queen. DraftKings has their name on a casino. Yeah, that's important. Which is pretty cool. Yep. And uh, some uh, updates in terms of the retail book in Chicago. Uh, DraftKings retail book is now under construction at Wrigley Field. Okay. It's going to be... Now it's going to be outside of the stadium, or can you get to it when you're inside the stadium? uh, Well, according to the restrictions imposed by the league there will not be direct access to the stadium. Okay. All right. So, but it will be a three-story structure. Wow. I mean, will it be connected or it can't be connected? Or it, it's you connected just, to the stadium. You just can't get into it if right. you're inside right. the stadium. They're okay. going to have a modern, here, here's the description, a modern state-of-the-art sportsbook facility with a roof, rooftop open deck area. Oh, that's nice. But no direct access into the stadium itself. It's three stories, right? And they yes. have a roof. I wonder if you can actually see the game, you know? I would assume that's I, I know, the reason uh, for the open th- deck That'd rooftop be pretty cool. Area. Because they're not allowed to get into the stadium from the Interesting. So, okay. Uh, that may be a little way they got around. We don't, we, I, no we don't access. know that for sure, no, but no. that would be interesting to see. I mean, uh, if you can watch the game. I know the big thing in Chicago is, you know, they have those, uh, you know, the apartments and across the street and that kind of, that seem like you can see into the stadium. I wonder if... Um, you know, I wonder if the sports book will have that. We'll we'll see, I guess. Well, again, it should keep it, us in suspense. This will be know? open. They're hoping by the twenty twenty three season. Okay. And the reason they they didn't start construction just yet, they had just received a couple of months ago permission from the Chicago City Council that allowed them to do this because they had to get. Uh, it was a historic landmark situation. Sure, sure. Yeah. So they had to wait for that ruling to come through. Uh, now we had talked that's earlier. Gonna, that w- that's going to be a fun sports book to visit. Yes, say, especially on game day. Oh, it's going to be great. See, I'm going to be torn. Do I want to go to Wrigley Field or I want to go to the sports book now? <laughs> See, well, well, I'm definitely going to want to go. to Well, Wrigley look in Field New, New York, they have legislation where they want to put like sports books in Yankee Stadium and City Field, and I, I, that I mean, I I think. They're going to take a look at how Chicago handles it and see what the situation in Chicago, and maybe that might, you know, kind of move the legislation along in New York. Hey, New York is already looking to expand the online sports betting market. Around. Yeah, so yeah, I, you know, they're they're, they're doing looking everything. for three casinos in the Manhattan area, and they so, just raised uh, the license price for those. Yeah. They're, they're now looking at a billion dollar so. license to get a, a Manhattan casino. So, uh, and they just decided on fantasy sports. How about that, yeah. New York? <laughs> I'm waiting to see a fantasy sports bar. I don't. Know, I, that's interesting. I because you got it, sports betting bars. That's an interesting concept. I, I don't know. I mean, you, it's a it's a way for DraftKings and FanDuel to e- even get additional revenue because sometimes sports uh, sports betters and fantasy sports. I know they overlap constantly. Sure, sure. But I, I wonder if uh, there's a, a chance for a fantasy sports betting theme bar. Well, that'd be interesting. Uh, we had talked about Massachusetts or uh, Vermont being surrounded by sports betting at the top of the show here. Uh, One piece of legislation I just want to hit before we move on to some of the deals. In Maine. Okay, Maine, yeah, you said you want to bring that up. Uh, There's a new sports betting bill that's making its way through the legislature. Um, 
it's a it's a compromise bill. Okay. Because a while ago, um, it was released that the governor's office had a sports betting bill that was going to focus on giving, well, basically a monopoly on mobile sports betting and the sports betting industry to the tribes. Okay. The uh, Wabanakis. Okay. To be uh, specific here. There's a compromise bill uh, that is going to give the tribe exclusive rights to the mobile sports gambling market in the state. Okay. As well as giving Maine's two casinos, both owned by out-of-state companies, an opportunity to get into the sports betting market as well. Under the terms of the bill, you've got the Oxford Casino okay. up in Oxford, Maine. They would get on-site sports gambling. All right. Retail only? Retail and mobile. Oh, okay, retail and mobile. Uh, Hollywood Casino sports gambling would be located at its raceway. Okay. Um, the way it's going to be split up, the tribes will get 50% of the revenue. The, the sports betting operator will get 40%. Mm -hmm. And then the state would get 10%. Oh, okay. That sounds so, like a good compromise. Anyone mad about that? Yeah, a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. All right. There there's there's opposition. All right. Well, as, there, as usual. There's it's, always it's opposition. New it's yeah. New England. There's yeah. opposition to yeah. sports betting everywhere. Yeah. Um staying in New England a little bit, uh, before we even talk about some of the deals, uh we have Churchill Downs buying a charity poker room to bring in some historical horse racing machines. Okay. I think it's uh Chaser's poker room in New Hampshire. I have no idea what that so, is. So uh it's kind of interesting to watch Churchill Downs make another move into yeah. uh, another market for uh, historical horse racing. They currently have three other spots, Kentucky, where they're operating, and they have pending deals in Virginia, Louisiana. Okay. So New Hampshire's kind of a uh, odd duck. I yeah, guess well, you can say it's it. their farthest, farthest north. Yeah. It's an interesting uh, market. And uh, last but not least, we're going to just talk some uh, quick deals here. Uh, the big one, we'll probably spend more time on this than any of the other ones, Rush Street Interactive. Okay. Another deal with Rush Street Interactive. This isn't a brand ambassadorship kind of deal. This is a content deal with Mike Francesa. I heard about this. Yeah, he's going to do a podcast, yes. right? He's okay. going to be doing a lot with them. He's going That's to be great. Doing... No, it's, uh, you know, he's a legend in radio, so he, can't, can't wait to hear it. This is one of the few deals I've seen Rush Street make for both brands. Mm -hmm. This is for Bet Rivers and Play Sugar House. Okay. He's going to be doing a weekly, po a twice-weekly podcast. Okay. Uh, is he still doing his other podcast? I don't remember uh, if he is or isn't. I don't know. I don't think I kind of so. lost track of him after so. a while. Yeah, I, I was curious to see. I, I heard he was going to do this podcast. I didn't know how often he would do twice it. Twice weekly. It's twice weekly, okay. And uh, this actually helps him because I know he still has a huge following in New Jersey, New York. Oh, sure, yeah. And even Connecticut. Absolutely. I, I remember you know, I grew up with, listening to Mike and the Mad Dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Saw that split. Then I saw mm -hmm. for the Francesa show on WFAN. And then he left WFAN to do his podcasting setup. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Honestly, I, I feel bad because I lost track of what now, he was doing. Now, will they uh, keep the Mike's On theme song? I don't know. That was one of the better <laughs> theme songs for <laughs> right. a show. I, I wish we could hire somebody to come up with one yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Had I known you were going to do this story, I would have grabbed the Mike's On theme song. <laughs> I would have played it. Well, yeah, so. again, that may be owned by something else. Yeah, so. who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, again, the deal is the uh, Francesca will provide exclusive network and social media content for both brands twice weekly podcast series okay. series of digital videos that will be on both platforms okay so i'm assuming uh i know rush street does those city casts yes yeah they do a uh i guess a betting show in each major city for each major city yeah yes yeah. and uh i'm assuming it's going to be part of that whole lineup okay. of content stuff uh they're also going to be uh having Francesca do appearances at sporting events. Great. And good. he's going to be doing video content at those appearances, not just by himself, but with the fans as well. Great. Good. So I'm, I'm going to be very curious to see exactly how the fans interact with him. Oh, no, I, I, I can't wait. You know, like, uh, he's a guy who uh, we grew up with and uh, listening to on the radio. So, yeah, no, and any time he, he's on the radio, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, listen. I'll give him I'll, a listen I'll because it, definitely he's got check such a distinctive voice. Yeah, yeah. And some of his opinions are very interesting in terms of he's especially a, the Giants and the Jets. He's a big horse racing guy. I think he owns horses. Yes, yeah. yes, he does. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. Uh, last uh, deal for the day. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino announced a multi-year partnership with the Mo Milwaukee Brewers. Okay. Deal will see the Potawatomi 
uh, become the exclusive casino partner of the Brewers. There's going to be a Potawatomi branded entrance at the right field side okay. of American Family Field. And uh, it's a, it's actually an extension. I of can't wait field. to see their sign at the stadium because uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen it spelled out. Potawatomi? <laughs> Potawatomi. It's one of the f- more fun casino names <laughs> yeah, to say. Right. Potawatomi. I, I love that. I love the name. So the, that's it for this week's Turnpike Sports book report. Please keep those press releases coming in. Info at turnpikesportsradio.com. If you've been following along on the television side, you will see a lot more news stories scrolling along the bottom. We've even got the print version coming out after the show publishes. Head on over to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com and click on the blog button, and you'll see a full-blown print version of the book report covering the stories we just talked about, as well as stories we didn't have time to talk about in the half hour so that we do this uh, segment. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.